right, guys. It is another hazy, smoky day here in the end times in paradise in the green mountains of Vermont. As good God, I can only imagine what this wildfire <coughs> must look like up in Canada. I have noticed how many is this day five of this shit? Uh, I have noticed that there has not been one single story anywhere in the mainstream media, at least on Yahoo News that I have found, mentioning whatever is going on up there to create this uh, smoke overtaking a fourth of the damn country. Anyway, it is, it is this smoky day. It is... Thursday, July 11th, 2019, and I have uh, got to get ready for my interview. I'm really looking forward to my conversation with this fellow James Dyke. Uh, if you're not familiar with James, you will be shortly. Uh, great guy, so I really need to get ready for that, so I'm just going to do a, for now, I might come back later today. Oh, before I go, I do want to send out a big thank you to Brother John. Thank you very much, John, for your kind donation to uh, Sancho and my work here on YouTube. Sancho is uh, seems to be doing all right. We are still waiting for the first bowel movement. So anyway, guys, all I... I haven't even gone over to the mainstream media today, you know, with with all of you, my kind-hearted doomers, sending me all of this stuff. Uh, I just open. I'm just going through my my email to to look at a few of the articles that uh, I can choose from. Oh, what do we have? A couple of people have sent me. Uh, completely terrifying study warns carbon saturated oceans headed toward a tipping point. Yes, they are. Speaking of tipping points, here's an Antarctica shock as melting glaciers at tipping point will cause significant sea level rise. And while we're down there in Antarctica, Antarctica's ice is degrading faster than we thought, and there may be, may be no way to stop it. Uh, yeah, I, how do you stop the melting of Antarctica once it's begun? Here is London to have a climate similar to Barcelona by 2050. I did not realize that there was a town called Barcelona, Venus. How about, there is an environmental disaster unfolding in the Gulf of Mexico. I guess that's what is on, uh, on uh, Huff Post Mine, a slow moving flood of polluted Mississippi River water is causing serious damage to Gulf species and a major storm threatens to make it worse. I don't know, as I say, I haven't turned on the mainstream media. Have you, uh, I guess you've heard about that thing. They're talking about 15 inches, 15 inches of rain could swamp Louisiana in the next day or two. Uh, <coughs> and this is the first, I don't know if they called it a hurricane or <coughs> tropical, what a tropical depression. Jesus, we're so fucked. But anyway, uh, I, you know, we need a little doomer humor and uh, damn it, I've already lost in the shuffle the uh the alert tribes member looking for some doomer humor from coming out of not the onion on this case but nashville scene 
I guess Nashville scene is is Nashville's probably their weekly paper I'm guessing uh, so anyway we're going to the advice king the advice king <clears throat> which is <coughs> I don't know if the advice king is just uh, particular to Nashville scene or if this is a syndicated columnist okay but anyway the Advice King is answering the question, how do we escape the impending climate apocalypse? Oh, his name is Chris Crofton, is the Advice King. Okay. Dear Advice King, <clears throat> is there anywhere we can go to escape the impending Climate Apocalypse. Thanks. <coughs> Signed, Barb in Los Angeles. Okay. So this is Chris Crofton's advice to anyone trying, such as myself, trying to figure out where can we go to escape the impending climate apocalypse? <coughs> Move to a hill or become friends with someone who lives... <coughs> on a hill. I am the last person you should be asking <coughs> about this, Barb. I'll be dead four days after the shelves at Trader Joe's are empty. I think it is pretty funny that the automobile was invented a little more than 100 years ago and it is threatening the existence of the entire human species and people are like, well, there's nothing we can do because we already have them and they're really fun. Plus, we've already paved everything. And then the, I guess this is the tombstone for the human race. Here lies the human race they loved to ride around. That is exactly my, my number one favorite thing on the planet to do, uh, particularly since I've given up on ever having sex again, is to ride around. Uh, I have put 8,000 miles on my gas-sucking truck since I bought it less than two months ago. 8,000 miles because I love nothing more than riding around in my gas-sucking truck. <clears throat> One million years from now, <clears throat> when the world is run by giant, hyper-intelligent cockroaches who wear pants and only travel on foot, cockroach professors at cockroach colleges are going to teach classes about how fucking stupid we were. They will focus on the late 19th century to the death of the human species in the year 2140. This period referred to by the cockroaches as the paving period or the clown meltdown will be extremely funny in retrospect. Here is an example of how I imagine future cockroach academics will talk about us. This is from the class Human History 101 from Antenna University's Professor Ima Roach. <clears throat> Hello class. Ronald, please take off your hats. Thank you. So, in this course, we're going to discuss the decline and fall of drivers, also known as humans. Humans thrived on Earth for a long time. They were walking around and having fun. <clears throat> then they invented motorized carts. They called these motorized carts cars for short. No, it's true. The basic idea was with 
they're motorized with the motorized carts you don't have to walk anymore you can go places sitting down so everybody got really fat no it's true these fat people liked rolling around on their carts so much that they paved the entire earth so they could roll around on it better. That sounds funny, but they really did it. And then they found out that the smoke that was coming out of their cars was causing the earth to get hotter, but they decided that since they had already paved the whole earth, it would be too much trouble to unpave it. So they all burned up and drowned. No, it's true. Ronald, what are you looking? Is that sheetrock? Did you bring enough for the whole class? Put that away. Thank you. The richest humans piled into spaceships, which were essentially sky cars, and they tried to drive to Mars. We all know how that turned out. If you are not familiar with that story, watch the movie Sky Titanic, starring Rochonardo de Rochrio. <clears throat> And that, my handsome friends, is why we walk. Okay, for next week, I want five paragraphs on selfies. There you go. Uh, a class of cockroaches just trying to figure out Humans 101. You know, nobody, uh, no future irradiated cockroaches, space aliens, or whoever trying to sift through this little bitty layer, the little narrow geologic record that humans are leaving behind. Can you only imagine uh, what these future... Uh, archaeologists are, are, are going to sound like uh, 10 million years from now trying to figure out what the fuck happened here. Uh, in this brief little, uh, it was, it, 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 god damn, if, if we could, if we could be a fly on the wall of an archaeologist 10 million years from now trying to figure out that little line in the geological record. But speaking of that little line in the geological record in the Anthropocene and this term, the technosphere, uh, which is another word for the human project, pretty much, I need to get to my uh, conversation <clears throat> with James Dyke so we can all be educated uh, on the technosphere, which will become this thin little line in the geological record. So I highly suggest you get out there in the wildfire smoke and enjoy the technosphere while we still have a technosphere to enjoy. Because we are so fucked. Bye, guys.